Hello everyone! I hope that you are having a wonderful and Merry Christmas. I said I was going to come on and I wanted to just um, come on here and just share something with you uh, that the Lord laid on my heart and I'm going to just see if I can't uh, do this simultaneously with my other my other page here. I don't know if I can so bear with me for a moment while I try. Let's see if I can do it. If it'll let me, but I'm just looking forward to uh, spending some time with you. I think it's going to be lovely, and um, I hope and pray that you have enjoyed your time with your family and your friends. Ah, looks like we've got it here. It looks like we've got it. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. There we are. Praise Jesus. Okay, so. I'm on, yes, good, praise God. Okay, so I think I'm good to go on both pages. That is awesome, and I just wanna spend some time with you, just a few minutes, um, because the Lord laid this on my heart, and I just wanted to share with you, you know, how beautiful Jesus is, and you and I know it's all about Jesus. And I wanted to share some scriptures that the Lord has laid in my heart about this, because Sometimes, you know, it's Christmas Day today and a lot of us are getting ready to lay our heads down for the night and things have been extremely busy and maybe you, maybe you got it wrong and maybe you were all wrapped up in the busyness of it. But I want to share with you what the Lord God said. And the Lord God is very clear about what is the most important thing. We think about this when we think about our families. We think about, you know, spending time with our our loved ones and how important it is and sometimes we realize that if we don't focus on the right things then we end up missing the mark and in the end you don't have the time that you wish you spent you don't have the memories you know that you wanted to make it was just all about the busyness the busyness and it's the same with Jesus and even more important because Jesus is the most important one in your life for an eternity no one can change your life like Jesus. No one is more important than Jesus is. No one. And so what I want to do is I want to pray first, and then let's just get moving and let's go into the Word of God. So, dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for today. I thank you for each and every one here, Lord God. We ask that you open up our eyes in Jesus' name. Amen. So we are excited. I'm very excited. And we're going to just go into the Word of God. And the thing about it is, you know, Jesus said it was important for us to spend time with him. You spend time with your family members and you cultivate a relationship with them. You spend time with your friends, your spouse, and you cultivate a relationship with them. And that's the only way that you can cultivate a relationship with that person. And it's the same and even more important with Jesus because Jesus, again, as I said, is the most important one in your life for an eternity. Nobody can give you salvation but Jesus. Nobody can give you freedom but Jesus. Nobody can love you unconditionally like Jesus loves you. Nobody. I don't care who it is. I don't care who it is. Oh, hello, everybody. Hi, Pam. Hi, Willie. Yes, nobody can love you like Jesus does. And the most important relationship you'll ever have in your life is that relationship with Jesus Christ. And we don't want to miss the mark. I want to finish well. You know, I've been thinking about this. I've been serving the Lord for, I don't know, maybe 20 something years, uh, 21 years, 21 years. No, 23 years, excuse me, 23 and a half years. And I've always loved him. But over the past three years, there's been something that God has really been doing in my heart and in my life that I haven't seen before. And it's an intensity. It's something that is so different. And it's about spending time with him. It's about spending time with him because here's the thing. If you say you love him, then how do you miss time with him? If you say you love him, you want to spend time with him. Jesus said that we're the bride, right? We are the bride. We are the bride of Christ. And if you're married, you have a husband or you have a wife, the whole thing that you enjoy is spending time with them. You long to spend time with them. The whole purpose, you don't get married and live apart unless you absolutely have to. 
and that's a you know, burden in your heart. But you get married, you come together because it is about relationship. And it's the same thing with Jesus Christ. So I want to take you to a scripture here. And this is in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 38. And you've read this before. This is about Mary and Martha. But I just want to remind you because sometimes we forget. Sometimes we forget. And when we forget, that's when we neglect him. And neglecting him, neglecting Jesus, is the biggest mistake you'll ever make in your life. You blink and all of a sudden you realize just how far down the road you are, just how far off you are from him. And it's so easy. It's really too easy. It's a scary thing. So we've got to cultivate the relationship. So when we look in the book of Luke, chapter 10, verse 38, it says here, you can turn there with me. It says here, now it came to pass as they went that he entered into a certain village and a certain woman named Martha received him into her house. And she had a sister called Mary, which also sat at Jesus' feet and heard his word. But Martha was cumbered about much serving and came to him and said, Lord, dost thou not care that my sister hath left me to serve alone? Bid her therefore that she help me. And Jesus answered and said unto her, Martha, Martha, thou art careful and troubled about many things, but one thing is needful. Look at that. One thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part, which shall not be taken away from her. Look at that. That is so true, Willie. Time with the Lord, oh, what a happy life. That's the only thing that won't be taken away. Jesus said it. It's right here in the Word. All the busyness that Martha was doing, she was getting things ready. I mean, let's think about it. We're, today is Christmas as things are winding down. Maybe you were running around, cleaning the house, baking things, getting the presents ready, wrapping things. Maybe you had, you know, 20 minutes of sleep or, you know, I've been there. Listen, I've done that. I, I, I've been down that road before. And what I realized was nothing was more important than spending time with Jesus. I remember I used to get so crazy about cooking. I love to cook. It's one of the ways I show people that I love them. I love cooking and I still love it. But what I realized was I would get so enthralled in this huge, magnificent meal that I'd be stressed out and then I wouldn't be kind to my family. I would be snapping at them. Come on, let's get it together. And I realized I don't want that. I don't want that. So I said, no, I, it was so important to me, but I realized, when I realized it, I said, no, 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 no. So when we have our Christmas dinner, our Thanksgiving dinner, whatever holiday it is that we're celebrating, I make it simple. Yes, it tastes good and, and that's lovely and special, but I make it simple. And the whole purpose is I purposed in my heart that I'm not going to miss the point. Because if I'm busy, cleaning up the whole house all day long because, you know, I've been baking for 17,000 hours or, you know, fill in the blank. Then on top of that, where's my time with the Lord Jesus? That's the most important thing. Where's my time? How do I get a chance to steal away and go spend some time with him? Because we do that on the holiday too. After all, Christmas is all about him, isn't it? I mean, that's what it's supposed to be about. So we miss the mark sometimes. And I just want to share this with you and remind you. Jesus wants us to be reminded that it's all about him. It says, but one thing is needful, and Mary hath chosen that good part which shall not be taken away from her. Just think about that for a second. This time that you spend with the Lord Jesus will never be taken away from you. How beautiful is that? That means everything else can be taken away. Everything else can be taken away. Think about that. You know, you read in scripture and they talk about this. Uh, Jesus talked about this. You know, you called me, uh, well, called on me. You said that you cast out demons in my name. You cast out this in my name. You healed the sick in my name. But the Lord Jesus said, away from me. I don't know you. Think about this. I mean, this is pretty crazy. You think about all these pastors and, and ministers and all of these people, but if they don't have a relationship with the Lord, if they didn't spend time with him, that's going to be taken away. In fact, we look about, we look at our relationships, okay? 
we have our friends. We spend time cultivating relationships with them. We spend time with them. We get together with them, right? We have our children. We spend time with them. We don't necessarily just want to buy them things. We want to spend time with them, quality time. This is all, it's, this is what it's about, right? You take them places so that they'll remember the time you spent with them. When you pass away, you want them to know that you loved them. You don't want them to know that you were rich. You want them to know that you loved them. That's what it's about. Your spouse, like I mentioned it, you spend time with him or her. That's the most important thing to you, right? You can't have a relationship, a marriage, without spending time with that person. You cultivate that. You long to spend time with him or her, and that relationship grows and it gets stronger. It's the same with Jesus. It's absolutely the same with Jesus. So let's go over there now, okay? It's in the book of Matthew, chapter 7, verses 21, 22, and 23, okay? So Matthew 7, and it's 21, 22, and 23. And yes, it's so true, never ever ending. Real love, yes, that is so true. So here's the thing. Jesus said this, okay? Don't take my word for it. Look at what it says right here in the Word. 721, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Now, I want you to think about something, okay? Think about your relationship with your spouse or with your children or with your friends. You know, if you never spend time with them, but you say you have a good relationship. That's a farce, isn't it? Because you can't have a good relationship if you don't spend time together. It's impossible. I don't care who the person is, you will not have a good relationship with them if you don't spend time with them. And Jesus is driving that point home to us because that's really what he longs for. We are the bride of Christ. And the bride spends time with the groom. And it's a beautiful time. And that relationship is the backbone of everything that we have. It's everything. Without the relationship, we absolutely have nothing. Nothing. Without time with Jesus, there's nothing. You're empty. It doesn't matter what position you have. You can have power and an anointing and not have Jesus. Let me repeat that. Power and an anointing and not have Jesus. Think about it. You can have it. Why do you think Jesus or the Lord in the scripture talks about um, not touching the anointed? Why do you think the Lord talks about that? Because there are men and women who are the anointed men or women of God who have the power, but there's no relationship. Think about that. You see them. You know, I learned this a long time ago, and this was a valuable lesson for me. Never ever say something bad against the man or woman of God. I don't care how bad they are. I heard my pastor say, he said, your pastor could be a devil. Don't you ever say anything bad about that man or woman of God. It's between them and God. And here's the thing. Their relationship is lacking. It can happen. It can happen to every last one of us. It can happen. So if you're focused on your relationship with the Lord, not only will you miss and you're not going to really be, you're not going to be so busy cutting down the man or woman of God in your own life, the people around you, you're, you're, you're going to be praying for them. Because you see, when you cultivate that relationship with Jesus Christ, you'll know that that's what it's about. You're not to be judging those people. You don't know what's going on in their heart. And even if you did, the Bible says, don't judge them, lest you'll be judged. Whoa. If you judge them, you're going to be judged the same way. So you're talking about your pastor, guess what? The way that you're judging him or her is the way God's going to judge you. And that is scary. That is so scary. So if it's about you, you're looking at that. That's a scary thing. But what's more important is why don't you pray for that man or woman of God? Why don't you pray for them? Because they need prayer. So a relationship with Jesus Christ is what's going to be cultivated and that time that you spend with him is going to be everything. So then he says here, 
Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. And how can you do the will of your Father, of his Father in heaven, if you don't have a relationship with him? If you don't spend time reading the word of God, how can you have a relationship with him? You can't. It's not possible. It says, many will say to me in the day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in, that, in thy name? And in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. And then will I profess unto them, I never knew you. Depart from me, ye that work iniquity. That is sobering. That is sobering. It's all about relationships, friend. It's all about the relationship with Jesus Christ. So let's not miss the mark. Let's not miss the mark. Let's spend time with Jesus. Take that time. Get your Bible out. Even tonight, it's late. I don't know where you're, you, you are if you're watching. Here in the East Coast, it's late at night. You might be in Europe. You might be in Africa. It's the opposite time of the day. But before you go to bed tonight, before you hit that pillow, spend time with Jesus. Your life depends on it. So we're going to close here. I just wanted to spend a little time with you. And the Lord laid it on my heart to share that with you because we all need it. We all need to be reminded to spend time with Jesus because that's what it's all about. That's the only thing that can't be taken away from us. So let's just remember that as we go in our days and teach your children that. Teach your children that as well. That's something that they'll never, ever forget. All right, let's close in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for each and every one that's here tonight. I thank you for each and every one, Lord, that it touched their heart. The word of God touched their heart that they may walk away with it changed. Soften their heart, open up their eyes, open their ears. Let your word be glorified in their hearts. In Jesus' name, amen. So friends, I want to thank you so much for joining me. This time was special and exciting, and I'm so glad that I got to spend it with you. It was a privilege. Be blessed. God bless you. Until the next time, I love you. Good night.